This video will demonstrate how to install and air test our integrally socketed Rigi Drain, Rigi Sewer, and Rigi Storm XL piping systems using ring seal joints. Step 1 Trench and Base Preparation. Firstly, you will need to prepare the trench for pipe installation. Mark the ground in order for the digger to excavate the trench. Excavate the trench to the correct width and depth according to the engineer's drawings, remembering to allow for side compaction and bedding. Once the trench excavation has been completed, set up a laser pointing upstream inside the first manhole or location pipe connection. This will determine the gradient line and level required. Use a plumb line to help set up and center the laser. Next, level out the trench and drop in the subgrade, keeping the laser level in mind according to the engineering instructions. Mark a line on an object, such as a spade, and measure the laser level against it to ensure a level base. Step 2. Jointing preparation. Now you can prepare to join the pipes. Clean the external pipe surface of the spigot end and rubber seal to remove any dirt. Measure the internal depth of the receiving socket and mark this depth onto the spigot end of the joining pipe. This will act as a guide when joining so you know when the pipe is home. Ensure you're using the correct EPDM or nitrile seal for the pipe diameter. Then place the seal correctly into the first reset of the spigot end of the pipe. Rigistorm XL requires two seals to be placed within the pre-milled grooves. If it is needed, clean the pipe end again to remove any dirt. Then apply a liberal amount of polypipe lubricant all around the spigot end and the seal. Step 3. Pipe Jointing To join, first clean the internal socket of the receiving pipe or chamber to remove any dirt, dust or debris. Then apply a liberal amount of polypipe lubricant to the internal surface. Depending on size, a pipe can either be lowered into the trench by hand or can be moved with the use of lifting equipment. It's possible to install smaller pipe diameters up to 300 millimeters by hand, but anything greater than 300 millimeters will require mechanical assistance. We recommend you double sling the pipe to lift safely. Once in the trench, carefully align the spigot of the pipe into the receiving socket it's being joined to. Now you can prepare to join the pipe. On larger diameters, we recommend the use of an installation stub, which can be inserted into the socket of the pipe. These are available prefabricated and not only help with the installation by protecting the socket, but also help to prevent debris entering open ends during jointing. Please contact us for more information on our installation stubs, available from 375 to 600 millimeters, and options for assisting jointing of larger sizes. Place a wooden board at least 18 millimeters thick against the installation to help spread the load and prevent damage to the end of the pipe. Using a digger bucket, slowly push the pipe into the receiving socket until it is fully inserted up to the pre-marked line. For smaller diameters, a pry bar can be used by hand instead of a digger bucket. During connection, inspect the joint to ensure that alignment is correct. Check that there is no foreign material or dirt infiltrating the joint and check that the seal has stayed in place. Step 4. Air Testing Once the joint is made, you will then need to complete a successful air test of the joint for leaks before backfilling. To do this, firstly check the line and level using a laser sight guide. Before testing, ensure the socket is clean and free from dirt. When it comes to air testing, you will need to ensure the following. 1. Check that the bungs are in good condition. 2. If you're using inflatable bungs, check that they are not cracked and that they are free from dirt. 3. Also check that the inflation ports are in good condition and that they don't leak when the bung is inflated. Four. If you're using steel bungs, check that they are free from damage, ensure that the rubber is in good condition, is not cracked and is free from dirt, check that the center cap is on the center port and is tight and sealed. 
use PTFE tape if necessary. After all the checks have been done, insert the bung into each end of the pipeline, leaving a 25 mm gap from the bung to the end of the pipe. If testing junctions, the bungs must be placed inside stubs of pipe and not on the blue inner wall of the junction. Testing on the inner wall of the junction may cause a drop in air pressure. It is also good practice to check that the manometer is in good condition before you use it. Then fill up with water to the zero point. Next, add air into the outside of the bung to secure a tight fit. Connect the manometer to the inner bung connection port and increase the pressure until it reads 100 mm water gauge or 0.01 bar. Allow the air pressure to stabilize for a few moments and increase the pressure to 100 mm water gauge if required. Hold the air test for 5 minutes and record the readings. This should not fall below 75 mm water gauge or 25% over the 5 minute period. Once the air test is complete, check that the pipe is still fully inserted. Stake a wooden board in place before you begin backfilling. This will hold the pipe in position and prevent any of the backfill entering the pipe. Then, backfill around the pipe in accordance with the engineering specifications. Once the backfill and compaction is complete, Repeat the air test on the pipeline to ensure joint integrity. You have now successfully jointed and air tested your polypipe drainage or sewer piping system. If you would like any more information, please contact us and we'll be happy to help.